Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Fundu Tester. In this, we are going to discuss about an important automation tool for an automation engineer. Today, I'll demonstrate on basis of what and how we are going to select a tool whenever we are going to learn a new skills. It is not like that we should pick any random tool and start learning and later on in future it, it won't be useful. We should always be mindful about whatever tools we are going to learn and it should help in a future for a current work as well as for a future work. So let's get started. Before moving forward, don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe Fundu Testers. Camera rolling action. So let's move to the computer screen. So here I have categorized the tool into multiple categories based on a programming language and based on the area we are going to work. So programming language we know the all the automation framework or tools works with all the programming language like Java, Python, JavaScript, C sharp. On other side there are another way to categorize. For example, let's say you are working on a UI, mobile automation, then API automation, framework building, uh, CI CD part cloud, database and file handling. So here we can see how we can plan based on the experience. So initial, initially you can either focus on a UI automation or API automation because API and UI automation will go hand in hand. Other, other side mobile and API automation go will hand in hand. So how it works? For example, let's say you're working on a UI automation and there are some complicated tests. For that, you need to grab some data from the backend side. So, if you don't know how to make an API course, then it will be complicated. Other side, same thing is going to happen for a mobile application automation. So, you can either choose a UI automation or you can choose a mobile automation plus API automation. So, it will be like a UI plus API or mobile plus API. So, here, if you are comfortable with a Java, uh, Java based automation tool, so initially you can start either with a Selenium or either you will start with APM and slowly eventually you can learn API testing and then you can move to the API automation. So for a UI automation, we have Selenium, we have Playwright and Selenite. Selenite is the latest tool. Till the time Selenium is a proven tool and everyone has worked and Selenium has proved that it is sufficient for a large scale as well as the enterprise or a startup. All the ecosystem, Selenium is a proficient tool for a UI automation. And for a mobile automation, we have Evergreen tool, which is a APM and for a API automation. So initially API automation can be started. Uh, so we need to basically learn the API fundamentals and then we can uh, jump into a Postman or we can use a Postman to make a API calls. And uh, for automation, there are a couple of libraries. So like uh, REST SEO, REST client, these all are a Java based library. So if you're working on a Java, then you should pick these libraries. And the last stage will be a performance testing. So once you are, once you know how to test API, how you can, you are able to make API calls on Postman and then you can, you should be able to automate. If you wanted to do the performance testing, then JMeter is a free tool and we can do the API performance testing using a JMeter. So slowly, one by one, first you have started with Selenium and then you move to the Postman, REST SEO and JMeter. So now, next stage, once you will have a four or five years experience or you are uh, reaching to six or seven years experience, you should know the framework. So mainly automations are based on the test engine Cucumber. But apart from that, there will be a hybrid framework, BDD framework, test driven framework. So as a tester, we should first learn one framework and then slowly we can expand our skill into, multi into multiple area. Because in one organization, for example, let's say you're working on a X company and as of now you are using a test engine based a hybrid framework. So you will be using all these components, see Postman, Selenium, test ng and hybrid framework. But in the next organization, everything will be same, but the framework will be based on the BDD. So you can utilize the same skills like a uh, Selenium Postman, but you have to work on a uh, Cucumber. And JMeter is similar to the test ng, but it is not widely been used in a uh, test automation. Now next is a CI. So in CI area, you can start working with a GitLab or whatever tool is being used in your organization so you can pick that one tool and then slowly you can move to the next technology so here you can you should know one or two tool for a one solution so for example let's say you know the GitLab, but in next company uh, they are going to use a bitbucket or they are going to use a team city so you know all these things selenium you know postman you know test and Cucumber, you know so now for you learning curve will be a team city or a bitbucket so you need to 
learn one new skills and rest of the things you can utilize similar way once you are comfortable with this and you are going to have more years of experience you can build your profile towards a back end automation there you will need to work on micro services and apart from there are a couple of cloud platforms are available so aws gcp azure so you can pick any one and this is again tricky area so we are going to discuss more about the cloud or back end automation in the next video but still i would say UI automation is easy to learn because we can automate any application like you we can pick Flipkart, Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, whatever we wanted to do and we can start automating. We can run the Selenium code and we can do whatever we wanted to do. But for a backend, we should need a backend. If we don't have a backend, then it will be tricky to learn. So if you are getting an opportunity to learn a backend, API testing is not just a baking. We are just making one layer. So we have UI and we are making calls to the first layer of a backend. So there will be multiple layers. So I'm talking about this area. So if you are going to get a opportunities to work on that area, then definitely you should pick that chance because you are going to get an implementation and on top of that implementation, you can sharpen your skills. Otherwise, it's very tricky to learn backend automation like AWS microservices and all this stuff and database so here again I have listed couple of uh, database so there will be mul n number of uh, databases available but uh, you can start with a one or two database and slowly you can expand your skills so now uh, once you are having a 8 to 10 years of experience or more than experience then you should know each and everything so from each and every bucket you should know each and everything or you should have capabilities to learn so you should able to quickly learn and it, it's a concept will be similar so if you are using GitLab or uh, then you are moving to the Bitbucket or Jenkins so there won't be a much learning curve but you should be able to easily adapt the skills for that you should always stick to the java every day you need to reverse your java concept and like that you can move so similar way uh, for a python based uh, we have the same thing for a ui we have selenium apm postman uh, for apis we have postman and then couple of frameworks will change so for example for api pytest unitest request these are the libraries and jmeter you can use so whatever api is built based on the rest protocol so you can use the jmeter for all whatever language it is built so uh, this is a, again language dependent then again there will be a multiple framework based on the uh, uh, python but ci cd part will remain same so if you're working on a java or if you're working on a python or any other language uh, these things will be the same almost it will be similar than aws so here you are going to make a aws if you are for example you are going to uh, send some data on a lambda or you are going to send some data on a sns or sqs or you are going to trigger a lambda function then your base code will be the python but library will be again aws sdk libraries you are going to use but java you need to make a api code that calls using a java and here everything will be changed so it will be based on the python and database again you are going to interact with the same database here you are going to interact with the same files but programming language in libraries will change so for example let's say if you are juggling between the java and python or java and javascript then learning curve will be huge so here ID you are using Intellijica or Eclipse or here the ID totally will change, everything will be changed. Even for a CTS thing, for example, you wanted to do the code alignment, you need to get some help from other or you need to find the shortcuts from the internet and then you can get the, your work done. So it's good to stick with one programming language, one umbrella, learn everything. Once you are comfortable with one thing, then you can move to the Python based or Java based, uh, script based tool. But here you should have some idea so for example uh, this area will remain same all the area if you are going to the python you will get you will get a chance to work on the same area just a programming language will change so yet there won't be a much learning curve for example aws you are learning for the first time then it will be tricky but once you know the aws you know all these things and then you are planning to move to the python so fundamental will be clear you just need to understand the syntax and then you can start working on a python so this is how things will work and these days so again automation fund uh, uh, companies have started realized even automation engineers also know that if you are doing a more unit testing we focus on a more unit testing and less end-to-end -end testing for a ui based end-to-end uh, -end and then maintenance will be less in future so uh, they are focusing on most of the teams are focusing on more on a 
backend or api automation and ui there will be only end to end or regression kind of a suit so for that you can leverage no code automation platforms like a excel queue so let's have a demo of a excel queue excel queue is a leader among continuous functional test automation providers and is trusted by fortune 500 enterprises across industry verticals Excel Q's AI-powered codeless test automation platform has proven to achieve three times the productivity and reduce test maintenance by 70%. That translates to over 50% cost savings and enables alignment with your continuous delivery. Excel Q brings the discipline, flexibility, and power of a conventional code-based setup into a codeless world. Automation-first, no-code capabilities make it easy for testing teams without programming expertise to develop automation in plain, natural English. The world is undoubtedly moving towards low-code, no-code, and cloud apps that present their unique set of testing challenges. Our game-changing technology, ExcelQ Live, drives digital assurance across enterprise and vertical industry apps. Give your testing verifiable acceleration Sign up for a free trial today. For the JavaScript basis of now, Playwright, WebDriver, IO, Cypress in on demand. So either you can continue working on a Java based automation tool or you can move to the JavaScript based automation tool. So here everything will change. Library will basically change, but your fundamental will remain same. So for example, here for a UI automation, we have Selenium, Playwright, Cypress, WebDriver, IO and uh, this again cypress uh, playwright will work with a uh, typescript as well and uh, mobile for we have apm uh, api side we have postman so whatever api is being built you can use the postman to basically manual testing something like that you can make api calls and you can see the response and request and all these things so postman will remain same but if you're working on automation side then library will change Syntax will change, so everything will be will change, and it will be based on the JavaScript. So there will be a learning curve. Uh, then JMeter will again remain same. It's like a Postman. We just need to plug in the APIs, and then we can do whatever we can do whatever we wanted to do. Uh, now framework side, we can Mocha based, Cucumber, Macaca. These all are the JavaScript based framework. Karma is there. These things will uh, again remain the same. So CI tools, uh, cloud tools. Cloud tools, if you are going to use again Lambda function, then programming language will change. So there will be a programming side learning curve. Then database again, you are interacting with Java, uh, JavaScript, you are interacting with a Python, you are interacting with Java. So this area will differ, but you know how you need to read the data, how you need to run a uh, database query. That fundamental will be clear. So there will be less learning curve. So initially for a new technology, there will be a huge learning curve. So for example, let's say all these things, it took seven to eight years to learn. But now you have nine, year, nine years of experience and then you are just switching a programming language. So uh, there will be very less learning curve. So within two years, you can be pro in a JavaScript. Then again, in the next two years, you can be pro in a Python or something like that. So first, we need to focus on one programming language, learn all these things and then slowly move to the next programming language. So this is how career path should be. Why? Because for example, let's say if you're working on any company, they are working on a one technology only. So umbrella will be a programming language that is a base. So either they are going to have a JavaScript base, all the tools, automation framework, or they are they have Java or Python based, but they are doing the same thing ui automation api automation mobile automation but programming language bills will remain same and company to company it changes it will be tricky to jump from one tool to another tool like uh we are comfortable with java plus selenium and then now and then instantly we are moving to javascript plus uh, playwright so that will be a tricky move and we are not going to reach anywhere because at the end of the day if someone is having eight to nine or ten to twelve years of experience so companies expectations will be uh we should know everything for a one umbrella my suggestion will be learn everything based on the one programming language then if you have understanding of one solution for example here you know the power post test ng gitlab aws one line you know and then you can move to the second line third line something like that you can for a one problem you should know two two three solution and then once you know these things then you can say uh, you are expert in one area and then you are good to go with the next area 
I hope this video is insight. See you in next video. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe for new testers. Thank you so much.